tweak any one of your choices that you make, you know, in the, within the performance to to be like, oh, oh, oh well, that's what you, oh, okay, I get it. So they're they're very important. One of the other things I found fascinating about the documentary is uh, is getting more background on a lot of our favorite voice actors. Every voice actor has a different origin story of how they got into voice acting, but a lot of them have have some similar threads when it comes to getting into being performers. A lot of them start as stage actors, yeah. musicians. It's, it's, yeah, a um, lot. I mean, the, the, the what, core of them, the core of them, are definitely, you know, performers. You know, like to, you know, at the at the at their core. You know, whether it be music or, or theater or you know some other type of performing art. What's the what's the John DiMaggio origin story? Where you know what what got you into wanting to do performance? Um, you know, I was a kid, and I grew up in New Jersey, um, so yeah, I'm kind of a little, a little close to home. Um, you know, or at least where I grew up, and 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 so, but I was, I saw my sister's high school production of The Sound of Music, and I saw all the kids that were playing the Von Trapp family kids, and I was like, wow, that's great. You know, this is really cool. And getting laughs and you know and hitting marks and singing songs. I was like, wow, this is really neat. I really would like to do something like this. And it just became like, and I played drums as a kid and like, you know, I I do that kind of stuff and perform and I, I really enjoyed it. And um and but then like you know acting it was just like all of a sudden I had this opportunity to start taking classes. My mom saw it in me and she nurtured it. And you know, I started. I was belonged to a children's theater group. Then when I went to a high, I went to a particular high school that had a great theater department. And then I went to Rutgers at you know, Macy Grove School of the Arts, the, the the theater program there. I didn't make it through, but I'm the only working actor from the class that's actually working. So it doesn't really matter because it's like <laughs> you got a BFA and a law degree. Oh, you know, people are just like, this sucks. I'm out of here. You know, just. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's funny, you know, it's a, it's a hard life, uh, it's no joke, a lot of people are just like, you know, well, how do you do it, how do you make it, it's just like, listen, if you can stand being told no 1,000 times to your face before you even get a slight yes, then maybe you can maybe, maybe think of, a, of, of you know, a career in the arts. Because uh, that's really it. Like you're fighting no's all the time, and you have to figure out for yourself how to make that uh, not personal. And it's next to impossible. Like you just have to kind of just become numb to it. Be like, okay, well, this is the next thing. And then once you figure out that it's a numbers game, and you really have to work on what you're doing so that when you bring it to somebody, it's good. Then you know. Then you got. Then you got something to work with, but if you if you're in it to be like you know a star or like people like I want to be a voice actor, well you are you an actor? Well, um, you know it's like no, you got to be an actor first. That's the that's the first that's the first thing. You have to be an actor first because anybody you know, if people think that you can just get in front of a microphone to start making funny voices and that's gonna work. No, no, no. You got you got a long way. Like it, it, you have to. Once you make a choice with a voice, you have to stick with that. And, and you have to make it last for four hours at a time. And you can't do it like for four hours at a time. You're, no, you ain't gonna make it, you ain't gonna last. And to case in point, like I did, you know, in, in Adventure Time, uh, one, of the little, one of the little roles I had in the show besides Jake was uh, Banana Guard number one. Right? Uh, uh, Princess Bubblegum, uh, you know, this guy, he's you know, a banana guard, you know, he's doing it. And it's a silly voice. And it's my impression of Pendleton Ward, really, is what it is. <laughs> uh, okay, well, yeah, sure. Okay, you know. So I would do that voice, and it was funny, and, you know, and, and the most lines Banana Guard would ever have were like, you know, five, five lines, maybe 10. And, and, and if it was 10, like five of those lines were one word sentences, you know? And I was like, hey. well, when the video game came out, there was a stack of dialogue for this character. And if you do this, a, a banana, yes, Banana Guard did have a full on quest. And oh boy, if you do this voice for over two hours, it feels like you're swallowing your own throat. <laughs> 
So, you know, you have to be wary of those kind of things, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just crazy. I, I, I'm just lucky to be doing what I'm doing, so. I'm, Every voice actor I've, I've talked to have, have made mention of what a what a tight knit community voice acting is. Yeah, they're all assholes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry if there are any kids here. Sorry about that. It's true. Sorry. You just learned that word. Steve, they know that word. It doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, of course. No, we are we are a, a, a tight knit tightly knit group. I you know we're I mean this hat's funny because like. Fred Tattashore actually gave me this hat. Fred Tattashore is an incredible hog and Baird and Gears of War. He's done everything. Um, but he got me this hat, Band of Weirdos. And that's really what we are. We're a band of weirdos. Like, you know, it's like, it's just, you know, sitting around, somebody will do something really ridiculous and silly, and then somebody else will do something ridiculous and silly. All of a sudden, you've got this chorus of ridiculousness, and everybody's just, you know, you know, just tooting their own horn in this weird sort of way, and I don't know, yeah, we, we all get along because we all have that thing, that just that, you know, that <laughs> that weird sort of like, well, well yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, all, we'll all at the same time be like, yeah, sure, I'll, you know, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Who are some of the veterans that helped guide you when you first got into voice acting? Who were, who were people that that watched out for you, helped you out, uh, maybe gave you some, some useful advice when you got into this world? No, nobody, really. <laughs> One man against the world? No, it was, yeah, that's it, you know, taking it on. Actually, that's not true. Billy West was really, uh, what's the name of Billy West? Was he here a couple of years ago? Yeah, 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 he was on, um, he was on BCN and everything. Billy was, Billy was Billy's great, but Billy was like, we went to the premiere of uh, Futurama and he was just like, John, you gotta take this in. This is real, but you're gonna remember this for a long time. I'm like, you're absolutely right. And sure enough, man, I mean, it's been so long. I mean, we just had our 20 year anniversary of, you know, when the show came out, it's, it's mind boggling. I'm so old now, oh my God. <laughs> um, but, but it's, uh, <laughs> It, it, it's, it's a trip. Like, he, he's been great. He's been kind with words. And, uh, you know, the best advice I've ever gotten from a voice actor is uh, from D. Bradley Baker. I don't know if you guys know who D. Bradley Baker is, but he's a mere dad. Like, he's just, he's phenomenal. He's Star Wars, Clone Wars. He's like a bunch of the voices. He's unbelievable. He's in the movie. He's in the movie. He's got this great he's, website. He's, he's got this great website called I Want to Be a Voice Actor.com. And it's, it's really actually fantastic. But he stole the movie, he stole my movie, the jerk. <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the one scene where he like, turns into a monster in a, in a jar, ridiculous. I, it's the whole reason I did the movie, is for guys like him to do stuff like that. But uh, I was having a real hard time at first with Adventure Time, because it was so, it was so not linear, it was so all over the place, it was so random, and it was frustrating because being in a in a in another show that's you know like based like a you know written like a sitcom scripts everything like that and that was all storyboard driven it was all backwards it was all weird and I just get so pissed off and just be like man I just don't get this show what what is this what the hell are they talking about totally mathematical dude what the hell why are these characters who the hell and it's no like, I mean, like, Rob Schwartz, the vice president of development at, 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 I mean, at, 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 at a network. Cartoon Network. I, I mean, I, I told him to his face, like, I don't want to do this show anymore. I don't get it. I'm sorry. I don't understand. <laughs> and he was like, you got to be in the show. You don't understand. You've got to stay in the show. And, like, I said it to, I said it to, to D, and D just went, you know what, John? Um, listen, the thing, the thing that, because I, I said to him, I was like, what am I what do I do, man? I don't, I, I'm just missing the boat here. He looked at me and was just like, John, listen, what you really need to think about doing is just, you know, first relax, then you should just go home and cry in your bag of money. <laughs> <laughs> and then just shut up. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That's a good idea. But then Tom Kenny, plays the Ice King, said to me, you know what, man, this is like this generation's yellow submarine. And I went, oh. <laughs> so 
So there's more drugs. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, I get it. I understand. You know, because that's that's who, that's all who watch that show is little kids that are like this is the greatest, and like 24 year old dudes like. <laughs> Too. I can say whatever I want now. So yeah. I'm gonna fire you fire from a show that doesn't exist anymore. So no, but you know, but seriously, like it, it, I mean, like that that's 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 some of the best advice I ever got. Go home and cry in your bag of money. And, it, and he couldn't have been more right. Because it was just like, all right, just calm down, John. Just take it easy. It's not you know, you're not curing cancer here, let's go, you know. So but yeah, that's actually some of the, it's some of the funniest advice and some of the best advice I've ever gotten from another actor. I got one more for you before I turn. Sure. Uh, in, in, that same, uh, in that same vein, have you found yourself taking on that role with newer voice actors, younger voice actors? I mean, you worked with Jeremy Shader when he was quite young. He was 12. I mean, I watched him, I watched him go through puberty. <laughs> He's a young man now. But I mean, you know, uh, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I was always doing stuff in the booth, and then I'd turn to Jeremy and be like, don't do that. <laughs> don't be don't, like Dan. No, no, don't, don't do that. That's totally, he, he, he got it. He was a good kid. He, he, I mean, he still is a good kid. He's a, he's a wonderful young man. Um, but like, you know, Eric Bowser. I don't know if you guys know who Eric Bowser is. He's, he's Heard a voice of Bugs Bunny. Yeah, I mean, like, he's unbelievable. And when I first started working with him, he was in the me too. When I first started working with him, I was like, dude, you, you're the future of the franchise. Wherever you go and whatever you do, I mean, and sure enough, I mean, the guy's doing the new Space Jam movie. You Wait, know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, I mean, sorry, Billy West, but that's okay, because Billy's all right. Billy's, Billy's tired. Billy's just like, he's just like, I did it when Jordan did it. Get out of here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, forget it. You know, like, ooh, LeBron. <laughs> Whatever, but um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I was supposed to root for him too because I live in LA. That's uh, that's hard, man. That beard's just too big. I gotta just, just trim it down a little bit, man. Ah, ah, ah. sweat and everything. It's gross. Sorry, ladies. I didn't mean to make you think about that. That's the kind of thing that when women hear that they just go. Oh God! Don't, don't don't say sweat in the beard anymore, please, John. <laughs> but yeah, I mean Eric Bowser. You know when you recognize talent, you definitely you give him a little. Oh man, that's good stuff you do. Yeah, because everybody likes to hear it. I mean, case in point, when I was doing F Futurama, we had B. Arthur was the, was the, you know the 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 uh, Amazon woman on the moon. She's a femputer. And we, and ben, Bender has scenes with her, we did scenes together, and like, I mean, we were like in the booth, like, doing makeout scenes, and with B. Arthur, a golden girl, Maud, and I'm like doing makeout scenes with her. I actually said at one point, oh yeah, baby, give me some of that. Look at B. Arthur. <laughs> but the first scene we did, like I was there, and they were like, John B's coming in, you want to record with her? Because I had already recorded my stuff. I was like, hell yeah, dude, are you kidding? Legend. And I went in, we, we, start the, we did the first scene, and she turned to me, and she went, how am I doing? <laughs> and I went, oh, Miss Arthur, you're doing absolutely unbelievable. And that goes back to the first, one of the first things I said is like, we're all looking for like, you know, we're all looking for proof, you know, dig me, like me, like, you know, please like me, you know, and then here's this woman, a legend, asking me, how am I doing? And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, so everybody always wants to, it's always nice to be like, you're doing a great job. Or, you know, just to make somebody feel good about it, especially when they are doing it. And, you know, it's just, it's a common thread. Actors are totally insecure. That's the bottom line, right there. That's that we're always looking for. Just like, hi. Well, John, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much, dude. 
I'm so scared. Oh my god. I think the crowd completely. I think, yeah, I think so. Oh my god. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think you've totally won him over. Okay. Let's see what Loki has for us. So I love Dr. Dragon. Oh. And I just felt he was very relatable. I just, I just, I always wanted him to win. So I wanted to know whether you ever wanted him to win and what he could have possibly done better to crush Kim Possible, Ron Stabba, and that horrible little naked mole rat. Thank you. John, I feel like she's been waiting to ask that question yeah, for a long time. Long time. You know, um, it was always fun to lose with him. That's really funny that you bring that up because the joy in that part is watching him lose over and over and over again. And then when he does win, he's actually a good guy doing like the best for the world and he's also become a flower. And so like, I don't know, I always had fun doing that show. That was a, that was a real treat. The guys that did that show, uh, uh, Mark McCorkle and, and Bob Schooley, um, they also did Penguins of Madagascar on Nickelodeon with us, and now they're doing Big Hero 6. Um, like, they, you know, they do, the, they do the, the television versions of these, you know, shows, and, and, but they're absolutely fantastic. And, and those guys just, I mean, they were just wonderful. And, I mean, you know, the, the Lather and Seno Bay rap, that thing was nuts. That thing was great. That the Kim Rick and she go right there. Um, but it was, I, I don't know, I always liked losing with him because that was the most fun. If he wins, then the show's over. It's a wrap, it's done. Like, Kim Possible, done, it's all finished. The, you know, the Chigo is, would probably just immediately kick his ass and take over and just be like, it'd be done with it, and you know, it'd be done. But I don't know, I, I, always, I always enjoyed just the opposite of what you were saying. <laughs> Sorry. I guess I just really felt bad for him, but he wanted it so badly, never got it, or when he kind of got it, then yeah, he just... But, you know, he's such a putz anyway, it doesn't really matter. He's such a ding-dong. I don't know. 